I wanted the Huntsman and the Queen to have a complicated relationship, more business-like than anything else. But before diving into that, I wanted to start with the Queen discussing the flashback from Alice that set off a domino effect that connects all the characters we've met so far. When her henchman tells her they killed Benny and kidnapped Alice as payment, I needed her to be cold with little emotions because she views everything she does as a transaction, which is something that she picked up at a very early age. So after this intro, we jump to page 8 where we see some of the Queen's goons discussing how the city of Oz is divided into four sections and that's what they should be focused on instead of killing some older hitman. But the other rabbits show concern. One refers to him as THE Hitman. I wanted to build this small legend around the Huntsman so that when the rabbits learn that they've been set up as bait and he disposes of them quickly, we believe it. So after he handles the marks, we hear a phone vibrate inside of a briefcase where his payment is. Then he hears the voice of the queen tell him he's still quiet. This is instantly familiar to him. We jump to 20 years earlier to page 3 and see the queen as a child in the event that connects these two characters. She sees the huntsman closing the door to her father's bedroom. You can see she's scared when she asks him where her dad is, but suddenly she changes course when he doesn't answer and talks about her rabbit. There's a few reasons for this. All character traits. I wanted her to be smart and inquisitive, which we see later in the scene but I wanted her to inherently be a control freak. As a child, she doesn't even realize that she's doing it, but she's trying to control the situation. So when she asks the huntsman if he wants to see her toys, then tells him come on and goes into the room, whether he follows her or not, that's where she's going. Even if he's gonna hurt her, it's gonna happen where she's comfortable, in her room surrounded by her rabbit and her toys. The conversation that ensues is important, more so to the queen. She's learning things about the huntsman and the situation that she's found herself in. There was no malicious intent. It wasn't done out of spite or revenge. It's business, or as the huntsman refers to it, a transaction. Not only is she intrigued by this word, but it's shaping her train of thought. As someone who's facing his own demons, the huntsman understands that this event will have an impact on this child's life. So he sorta of extends an olive branch the only way he knows how, offering his services. So he tells her he owes her a life. She takes this to heart and years later sacrifices some of her own henchmen to make sure the huntsman hasn't lost his touch because the man she needs him to kill won't be as easy to get to. He clearly hasn't and she reminds him that he owes her a life. He's good at what he does and he knows it. The huntsman is confident, bordering on arrogant. So when he opens the folder and sees the picture of the Mad Hatter, he picks his teeth like it's gonna be an easy mark. The Mad Hatter might beg to differ. <laughs> 